Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lipakshi Kurana. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you. India inaugurates key infrastructure projects in Arunachal Pradesh weeks after Tawang clash. Activists protest against Pakistani atrocities, illegal fishing in Balochistan. And Taliban seeks economic self-sufficiency and foreign investment for Afghanistan. And now for all the details, India's Defence Minister Rajnath Singh on Tuesday inaugurated 28 key infrastructure projects across seven states from Siang district of India's Arunachal Pradesh. The visit was the first after the recent clash of Indian and Chinese forces in Tamang sector of Arunachal Pradesh. Singh said India has never captured an inch of land from any country, but this should not be taken for granted. India's Defence Minister Rajnath Singh on Tuesday inaugurated 28 key infrastructure projects of BRO, the Border Roads Organisation, across seven states from Siang district of India's Arunachal Pradesh, weeks after a border face-off with China in the state's Tawang region. Singh described the projects as a testament to the concerted efforts of the government and the BRO towards the development of border areas in order to enhance the operational preparedness of the armed forces and ensure socio-economic development of the far-flung regions. In a veiled indication towards China, the defence minister said, India has not captured an inch of land from any country, but this should not be taken for granted. Adding further, he said, India does not believe in war. But if forced, it will fight. We are ensuring that the nation is protected from all threats, he said. India has sped up the infrastructure development in the regions adjoining the line of actual control, which borders China, in wake of the recent clash at Tawang. The two Asian superpowers have a tense relationship since 2020, when both forces engaged in a deadly clash in Galwan Valley of Ladakh region. Moving on, a day after six people were killed in two separate terror attacks in Rajouri district of India's Demon Kashmir, a huge crowd of mourners gathered for the last rites of the deceased on Tuesday. The incident came two weeks after two civilians were shot dead by terrorists outside an army camp in the district. A large crowd, including family members and relatives of six people who died in two terror attacks, gathered in Rajouri district of India's Jammu and Kashmir on Tuesday for the last rites of the deceased. Four civilians, including a father-son duo, were gunned down by terrorists who barged into their homes in Rajouri's Dangri area on Sunday evening. Following the attack, security personnel were investigating the residential neighborhood when a blast took place, killing two children and injuring around six others on Monday. Hundreds crowded the cremation grounds to mourn the loss of lives. Hindu, Muslim, Sikh, Isai, Tamam, Log, Milkar, Iska, Makabla, Karenge, or Dusra, Joha, Yejo Hamara security apparatus, Ka failure, Wobi, Dekna, Chahiye, Ki, Wokahape, failure, Haku, as he had incidents, Hore, Iski, Operbi, Riasti, Hakumutko, or Markazi, Hakumutko, Dian, Dena, Chahiye, Ki, Lokahase, Are, Kase, Are, or Kon Loghe, Joya, Kadamutare, Punchme, Itna, Anti, Shanti, Viti, Abi, Fir, Dubarage, Hamari, New Generation, Technically, the Arti, Abi, Chise, Ham, Hate, Hamithoda, Orkin, Janata. Meanwhile, a team of India's National Investigation Agency, or NIA, was investigating the attacks which came two weeks after two civilians were shot dead by terrorists outside an army camp in Rajouri on December 16. India has long accused neighboring Pakistan backs terrorists to spread unrest in Kashmir Valley, a charge Islamabad denies. 
In news from Pakistan, Pakistan's National Security Committee has vowed to have a zero tolerance policy against terrorism in the country. In a meeting chaired by Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif, the committee resolved to use full force of the state against terrorism. The forum also discussed a roadmap to revive the country's tipping economy. Pakistan's National Security Committee, NSC, vowed to have a zero tolerance policy against terrorism in the country after the second round of meeting was held on Monday at the Prime Minister's office. According to the press release issued by the Prime Minister's office, the committee resolved to use full force of the state against terrorism, adding that Pakistan reserves all rights in that respect to safeguard its citizens. In an apparent indication towards Afghanistan, the statement read, Forum concluded, no country will be allowed to provide sanctuaries and facilitation to terrorists. Later, in a tweet, Sharif informed, an economic roadmap to revive the economy and provide relief was also discussed in the meeting held over two rounds. Meanwhile, Pakistan's defense minister Khwaja Asif has alleged that Afghan soil is being used by terrorists against Pakistan. Talking to a local media channel, the minister said, that the Pakistan government is in constant touch with Afghans regarding the border violations. The statement comes after Pakistan's Interior Minister Rana Sanaullah made a similar accusation, saying that the Tehreek e Taliban Pakistan or TTP is using Afghan soil to attack Pakistan. However, the Taliban run Defence Ministry in Kabul in response termed the allegations as false and provocative. Pakistan has witnessed a sharp rise in terrorism incidents, especially in its border areas, during the past two months after the TTB announced to end ceasefire with Pakistan. Moving on, scores of Baloch activists staged a demonstration in London on Monday to highlight human rights violations by Pakistani security forces in Balochistan after a crackdown on indigenous people recently. They also demanded a ban on illegal fishing in Gwadar port area, which they said is depriving local fishermen of their livelihood. Members of the Baloch Republican Party held a protest in London on Monday to highlight human rights violations by Pakistani security forces in Balochistan after a crackdown on locals in the region for demanding their fundamental rights. The protesters in London highlighted recent police brutality against locals in Gwadar port area as massive protests for basic civic amenities and to demand a ban on illegal fishing were underway, which is affecting the livelihood of indigenous people. They also voiced concern over rising cases of physical intimidation and enforced disappearances as Pakistani forces operate with impunity in the wake of China-Pakistan Economic Corridor or CPEC. वो ये चाह रहे थे कि हमें एजुकेशन दिया जाए हमें इलेक्ट्रिक हमें इलेक्ट्रिक की सहूलियत दिया जाए और हमें जो है साफ पानी दिया जाए और हमारे जो टोलरिंग है जो समंदर में मतलब सिंध से या पंजाब से आके टोलरिंग करते हैं और जो नस्ल कुशी कर रहे हैं वहाँ पे वो उनकी जो है वो मतलब रोजगार ग्वादर के बस नहीं यानी पूरे मकरान बिल्ट के वहाँ से वो मछलियाँ पकड़ के जाहरे मंद एरिया और वहाँ पे बेचते हैं और इनकी जो है उनसे रोजगार उनसे होता है Activists have long blamed the ongoing construction of multi-billion CPEC project has only brought death and destruction for the locals instead of economic opportunities. The first right on natural resources in Balochistan should be of the indigenous people, but they are being deprived of it by the Pakistani government. In news from Afghanistan, the acting commerce minister of the Taliban-run administration has said they want international trade and investment as Afghanistan is facing isolation and suspension of some humanitarian operations over restrictions on women. The Taliban-led administration is facing increased isolation over policies in recent days restricting women from access to public life, including attending the university. Taliban's acting commerce minister Haji Nuruddin Aziz has said that the Taliban-run administration will encourage self-sufficiency and wants international trade and investment as Afghanistan is facing isolation and suspension of some humanitarian operations over restrictions on women. 
Aziz, in an interview to Reuters news agency, said that countries including Iran, Russia and China were interested in trade and investment and some of the projects under discussion were Chinese industrial parks and thermal power plants with involvement from Russia and Iran. He added that foreign investors were showing interest in Afghanistan's mining sector, which has been valued at more than one trillion US dollars. با کشت فراسر زمینی خیلی قائل است میخواهد در زمین های افغانستان که نزدیک به آبهای افغانستان سرمایه گذاری بزرگ بکنه همچنان کشور چین میخواهد ای عرصه سرمایه گذاری داشته باشه بعضی از کشورهای همسایه دیگه هم الحمدلله متقاضی هستند که در افغانستان در بخش زراعت مالداری و در برنامه سنت و چیزهای افغانستان هم سرمایه گذاری کنند The Taliban led administration is facing increased isolation over its policies in recent days restricting women from access to public life, including attending university. Azizi, however, did not comment on the new restrictions. An order barring female NGO workers has thrown the humanitarian sector, which is providing urgent aid to millions of people into disarray, with some organizations suspending operations in the middle of the harsh winter. In the East of Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka's President Ranil Vikram in news from Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka's President Ranil Vikramasinghe on Monday told government employees that public service is not an eight-hour job as he urged them to work overtime to make the cash-trapped island a prosperous nation in the year 2023. He said the government now has ability to provide fuel, gas, food and other items, but not all the economic problems are over yet. Public service in Sri Lanka is not an eight-hour job. President Ranil Vikramasinghe said on Monday as he urged public servants to work overtime to make the cash-strapped island a prosperous nation in the year 2023. During an event at his office on Monday, Vikramasinghe said each person's duties cannot be limited to eight hours a day and five days a week. By the end of 2023, I hope to take this country forward with the support of all of you and restore normalcy, local media quoted him as saying. Sri Lanka was hit by an unprecedented financial crisis in 2022 due to a severe paucity of foreign exchange reserves that led to acute shortages of essentials and soaring inflation. In May, the Sri Lankan government declared a debt default on over 51 billion US dollars in foreign loans, a first in the country's history. The president said the government now has ability to provide fuel, gas, food and other items. But not all the economic problems are over yet. Sri Lanka secured a staff-level agreement for a $2.9 billion bailout package with International Monetary Fund last August. But the funds are yet to come as its approval hinges on financing assurances from creditors. A large number of tourists thronged the Peacock Valley in India's eastern Katak city this past weekend as they came to kickstart the new year in the rare scenic environment. The small forest area boasts of over 150 peacocks. Have a look. Peacock Valley in India's eastern Katak city saw a rush of tourists who came to kickstart the new year watching peafowls on Sunday. Tourists clicked photographs of the peafowls who were roaming in the open and watched them from a distance. Caretaker of the valley, Kanu Charan Behra, said his grandfather, Panu Behra, in the year 1999, spotted two peahens and one peacock and took their care and fed them. Later, the population of the birds as he gave them a safe haven increased from three to over 100 now. Lockdown से पहले लगभग 108 पिकॉक थे। अभी लॉकडाउन में जब लोग आने यहाँ पर आने ही रहते, तभी उनका डिस्टर्ब मत हुआ। पिकॉक डिस्टर्ब नहीं होकर अभी 163 से ज़्यादा हो गया पिकॉक। After the death of his grandfather, Kanu Charan has been looking after the birds. Over the years, the spot near the Naraj firing range has become a popular tourist attraction and is known as Peacock Valley. This is real exciting on New Year, Naya Saal, Peacock se start karne ke, um, karna is the best thing. Or yahan pe itne peacock hai, maine aaj tak kahin pe nahi dekhi. Or they are so close. Or wo yahin pe wo ham jaise friendly ho ke khaa rahe, wo bhaiya unko khila rahe, to wo dekhne bahut acha lag raha hai. Kanucharan mostly feeds the peacocks with rice grains, wheat grains, or cooked rice. Apart from peacocks, the spot also has mongoose, pigeons, and doves among other birds.
Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now, our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.